Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna be doing a bit of a haul. I'm gonna be sharing everything I picked up during the recent Sephora spring sale, VIB sale, whatever the heck they're calling it nowadays. But I thought it might be fun to kind of like switch things up and actually do things try on style for you guys. So not only will I be showing you the products and uh, talking a little bit about why I decided to buy them, but I'll also be demoing them, putting them on my face. I'll be creating this look that I'm wearing right now. And uh, we'll chat a little bit about my first impressions and what I'm thinking of everything I bought so far. If you guys also shopped the sale, I would love to know what you picked up. Definitely leave a comment down below. Let me know what you bought. Let me know what you're excited about. Did you get any of the same things as me? I'm very, very curious to know. So yeah, I've got some pretty fun makeup, skincare, even some perfume to share with you guys. So if you're excited to see what I got in front of me, we're about to get into it. All right, so uh, let's get into this haul of goodness. I uh, I feel like my hair right now is looking a little crazy. I just got it cut this morning and I went a little bit shorter, which I think is really, really cute. It's just with the headband, it's looking a little, little crazy right now. Anyway, the first couple of products I wanna share with you guys are actually skincare products that I picked up. The first of which uh, you guys heard me talk about in my wish list video when I was talking about what I was planning to pick up for the sale. So this is actually not the full size. It's a mini that's about a third of the full size. It's the Herbivore Emerald Cannabis Sativa Deep Moisture Glow Oil. I was really, really curious to try a product like this. I don't use a ton of facial oils. I think they're really great and they can be very hydrating for the skin, but with my skin being very oily, having large pores, I kind of have to be careful about what oils I use. Some of them are a little bit too heavy, but I heard that cannabis sativa seed oil is really good for people with oily skin and acne prone skin, that it's non comedogenic, so I was intrigued. And now the full size of this guy retails for $48, and they do also have a CBD infused oil for an additional $10. And I was kind of like hemming and hawing, going back and forth between them and also the Kiehl's oil that's very similar, trying to decide what to do. And I saw a promotion to get a free sample of this with a purchase of $25. So I said, you know what, I was planning on waiting to make a purchase for the sale and since I wasn't a Rouge member, I couldn't use my discount code for a few days even though the sale had technically already started. So I decided to buy one thing from my wish list a little early to get this free sample because it's a third of the size of a full bottle and it was free. So it's kind of like essentially a value of like $16. So I said, you know what, that's probably worth a lot more then the 15% discount on my $25 item. So I pretty much used this uh, like immediately after I got it, like the day it came in the mail, um, I used it that night. And it is a very lightweight oil. It has a slightly grassy scent to it, but it does not uh, smell like cannabis at all, if you know what that scent is like. I have heard if you get the more expensive version of the emerald oil that has the CBD actually infused into it, then that one does smell very much like cannabis, which is not my favorite scent in the world. I don't really enjoy that very much at all. But I feel like the CBD would probably have like a lot of benefit to the skin, so I would consider trying it. I just figured, let me see how I get along with this guy first. If I really like it and wanna spend the money on the full size, I can invest in it. Even if I wait until the fall winter time when the next Sephora sale rolls around, you know, I have plenty of skincare to tide me over in the meantime. I just felt like this was a really good kind of compromise for me so I could use my gift card toward something else and still get to try this guy. Then the next product I picked up was something else I also talked about in my wish list video. This is the Ren Clean Screen Mineral SPF 30. It's a mattifying face sunscreen, which I was very, very excited about because it is so hard as a person with oily skin to find a good sunscreen that doesn't make you greasy, that also isn't a chemical sunscreen. Chemical sunscreens notoriously break me out, they make me rashy, so I've just committed to go full on mineral. I think it's probably better for my skin anyway. They don't sink as far into like the layers of your skin as chemical sunscreens do, so. I just prefer something like this. And this guy specifically really had me intrigued for a number of reasons. First of all, it only contains zinc oxide. It doesn't have titanium dioxide. Those are the two primary sunscreen ingredients when you see anything that's labeled as mineral. But I've heard that zinc is supposed to be a little bit better than titanium dioxide. So this one has 22% 
zinc oxide, which is really cool. And it's apparently also infused with passion fruit extract to help prevent against free radical damage and rice starch to help kind of mattify the skin, absorb excess oil and shine. And the rest of the ingredients in here seem pretty good. If you watch uh, Jen Loves Reviews channel, she talks a lot about skincare ingredients. So I've learned that uh, some of these things are pretty beneficial, especially to have high up on the list. Water is the first ingredient, obviously, but then you have caprolic, capric triglyceride, which helps things to absorb it to the skin, if I remember correctly. Um, aloe leaf juice, glycerin, caprolil, caprolate, I don't know, propandiol. And then it goes into like a whole bunch of weird stuff that is very um, sort of chemically scientific sounding. And then you get into a ton of fruit enzymes and extracts, which I can only be led to believe are less than 1% of the entire formulation. But I also know with those fruit enzymes and extracts, a little goes a long way. They can be irritating to the skin if there's too much in the formula, so maybe that's not a bad thing. Either way, I liked the fact that this was sort of a cleaner sunscreen formulation. I don't believe it has any kinds of silicones in it, which I also really like because silicones I find over time really clog up my pores. So here's to hoping it will be smoothing and will feel nice and won't be greasy or chalky or anything bad. So here's what we're looking like. It's an interesting lotion-y kind of consistency. We'll see how well it absorbs into the skin. That's one of the downsides of uh, mineral sunscreens is that they can leave a white cast. It smells pretty good though, I have to say. It is kind of slightly fruity. Definitely can tell that there are fruit enzymes extracts in here. And it doesn't really smell like sunscreen at all. So I will say texture wise, this does feel like a little bit greasy, it does feel kind of sunscreeny between my fingers, but it's not horrible. We'll see how it kind of sinks in over time. I feel like looking at myself in the viewfinder, I'm a little purple looking right now, so I'm definitely getting a little bit of a white flashback with this. Obviously, this is not something you'd want to be wearing when you were out at night getting your picture taken because it's a sunscreen, so just keep that in mind, this is really more for being out and about for the day. And I'm really curious to see how makeup goes on over this and if it sits nicely or if it starts to like break it apart and do anything weird. Also, the finish is definitely not as matte as I was expecting when I heard mattifying face sunscreen um, because it is very, very glowy. Like, yes, I put an oil on before I put this on, but I feel like even without the oil, this would leave a lot of glow to my skin. Like, it feels a little bit greasy on my fingers and they look pretty shiny, so... I'll definitely have to see without using the oil next time if it's any different or if this is just the way that it is. Then the next product that I picked up is one of these Laneige Lip Glowy Balms. So excited to finally have my hand on one of these. I love the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. It's one of my favorite lip treatment products. So when I saw they were launching more purse-friendly little squeezy tube balms, I was all about that. So these retail for $15, which is a little bit less than the Lip Sleeping Mask, but you are getting significantly less product. It's more convenient and obviously better to use on the go than, you know, bringing a jar that you have to stick your fingers into. Like, I wouldn't want to keep that in my purse. But if you're looking for, like, bang for your buck, the original lip sleeping mask is definitely the way to go. So I got the pear version, which when I went to Sephora and smelled all of them, like, originally I thought I wanted the peach, but I actually liked the pear the best. It smells like something familiar from my childhood. I remembered what it was the other day and then I forgot again. It almost reminds me of like the Pearberry scent from Bath and Body Works, maybe like a little bit. Like it's pear, but it's not in your face. It's not overly intense. It's really, really pleasant actually. And the gloss feels really nice. It's much thinner than the lip sleeping mask. Definitely more like a gloss balm hybrid, but it definitely feels really good on the lips. It doesn't feel too gloppy feels really hydrating, helps keep your lips soft throughout the day. So this is just a fun little new addition to my purse. So why don't we move on to some makeup. Now, something that I did not think I was going to purchase, like it wasn't on my wish list, but I kind of impulse bought, was this set from Too Faced. I saw it while I was kind of perusing the Sephora website. It's called their Sex on the Peach complexion set. It retails for $45 and in it you get a full size of their Peach Perfect Setting Powder, a full size of the Better Than Sex Mascara, and then mini sizes of their pe uh, Primed and Peachy Cooling Matte Skin Perfecting Primer 
and peach mist mattifying setting spray and these mini sizes are very decent they're not like a little tiny sample you would get as like a free add-on they're more of like a true travel size so I thought these were pretty generous um, the powder in and of itself retails for 30 something dollars so you're getting the mascara and these other two products that normally retail for like $15 a piece for an extra like $12 or so. So I just thought it would be a really nice way to try out all these products from the line. I haven't tried anything from this peach collection aside from the original Sweet Peach palette. And since they are geared more towards mattifying and I have oily skin, I was like, you know what? Let's just give it a whirl and see how it goes. And uh, I have to say, I'm kind of in love with these products. I mean, I know I've only had them for less than a week now, but uh, so far, so, so good. So I'm gonna just start by going in with some of this cooling matte primer. I'm just gonna put a little bit of this in my T-zone area. Comes out like a whipped kind of moussey texture, sort of got that silicone -y vibe, which is nice for filling in pores. But again, it can kind of clog them if you use a primer like this too much. And yet you definitely do get a nice cooling sensation with this primer. And I feel like as you work it in, it kind of dries down to a nice matte finish, really blurs everything out. And it smells pretty good too. It reminds me a lot of the scent of the Hangover RX primer. I feel like it's very, very similar to that. So I didn't pick up anything new as far as um, foundation or concealer goes. So I'm gonna throw that on quick. I'm gonna use my uh, Tarte Face Tape and Shape Tape today. Also, I'm going to apply them with this new Juno & Co. Uh, cloud sponge. I think this is limited edition. They just launched it a couple of days ago. I got sent to NPR and I've had it now for maybe about a week and a half. This is a really nice sponge. I think I like it a lot more even than their microfiber sponges. It's very soft. It blends out makeup really nicely. Like It gets really, really big when you wet it, so it's very soft and squishy. So far, I'm pretty impressed, and I think it retails for like five, six dollars, so not gonna break the bank. Anyway, getting myself distracted. Okay, I'm gonna go put these on, and then I'll be right back. Okay, and I'm back, got my foundation and concealer on. I'm gonna say right now at this very moment, my skin feels just slightly itchy, like right around my nose here, right around my nose here, I'm wondering, if it's the sunscreen, because I haven't used the sunscreen before, but I have used the emerald oil a couple of times and I didn't notice any itching. So it's making me mildly nervous that there's something in this formula my skin is not happy with, but uh, we shall see. Anyway, in the meantime, we'll move on to powdering the face. I'm gonna go in with the Peach Perfect powder from Too Faced. So if uh, you haven't heard this powder, it smells like peach rings. It's kind of delicious. It smells very similar to the um, Sweet Peach palette, if not maybe even more peachy. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this on a fluffy brush and kind of just lightly dust this all over the face to set down my makeup. And what's interesting about this is that you can kind of taste the powder in the air as you're applying it to your skin. Like, you know how you kind of get the cloud of makeup around you while you're powdering? This has, like, sweetener in it, I'm pretty sure, which I don't understand how that could be very good for your skin. But as far as the uh, experience of applying this, it smells delicious and uh, it tastes kind of nice too. So I definitely feel like this powder really does mattify the skin, but... It doesn't make it look too flat. It doesn't make it look cakey. I feel like it airbrushes things out pretty nicely. And it also has a very slight, I feel like, pinkish tint to it. So as you're applying it, it gives your skin like this slight peachy pink kind of tone. It, it darkens, I feel like, the foundation concealer just a teeny bit, which I don't mind. I don't feel like it looks mismatched now with my neck or anything like that, but just... Be aware, this is the translucent shade, so if you have very, very fair skin and you're using a foundation that runs just a little dark on you, just know that this will darken it up just a little tiny bit. So I also didn't pick up any kind of new uh, blush, bronzer, or highlight, so I'm just gonna go in with my Cover FX uh, Perfector 
face palette that I got from BoxyCharm to uh, give my face some life. So let me go finish uh, this up off camera and then I'll be right back. All right, so uh, while I was at it, I also realized I might as well throw on my brows. I used the It Cosmetics Brow Power today. And then in honor of all of these peach products, I decided to bust out my Too Faced Sweet Peach Palette today. This is such an oldie but a goodie. Nobody ever uses this guy, I feel like, on their channels anymore, but it's such a nice palette. It's neutral, but it's got like some nice, very wearable pops of color. This is a really good everyday palette, I feel like, for people that want to branch out of just plain, boring, normal brown shades. So this look was super easy to throw together. Uh, I used the shade White Peach a little bit on the brow bone just to kind of add a minor highlight. Then I went in with Puree in my crease and then Summer Yum to intensify the outer corner a little bit. Then I used uh, the shade Luscious up here all over the lid, a little bit of nectar in the inner corner, put a puree on the lower lash line, and then used just a tiny bit of this dark purple shade Delectable as a liner with a really like small flat brush. Boom, took me legit all of about three minutes to do. So the uh, Sex on the Peach set that I picked up did come with a full size of the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. Now, if you guys have been watching my videos, you'll know this mascara is in my everyday makeup drawer rotation and it has been for a while now. I got a tube back in BoxyCharm a couple of months ago. So this is actually the one I've had on hand. I'm not gonna open up a fresh new tube anytime soon. Ultimately, the one I just got in this set, I think I'm gonna put into my makeup storage and save as a backup for later. I'd like to try a different high-end mascara when this one dries up and runs out. But it's not a bad mascara at all. I'm happy to have another one. I feel like it does add quite a bit of volume to the lashes and it doesn't make them like too overly clumpy. It doesn't get them to stick together too, too much. It's a nice everyday mascara. I know so many people like this is their holy grail. Um, for me personally, I don't think I like it as much as I like the Lancome Monsieur Big Mascara. I think I might use that one again. Actually, next, I do have another tube on hand. I haven't used it in probably a good seven or eight months now, so I kind of like to have a fresh opinion of it on my mind because I remember it being uh, one of my favorite mascaras I've ever tried. So here's what the mascara looks like on. It's nice, it's definitely decent. I don't dislike it. Happy to have another one, but I wouldn't have gone out of my way to like purchase that mascara, you know what I mean? So then the last item that was in that Too Faced set is the Peach Mist Mattifying Setting Spray. And this, I think, might be witchcraft in a bottle. Every time I've used this, and I will say I have only used it in conjunction with this powder, so it could be either of these or the combination of the two together, but when I've used these two together, which at this point's probably been like three times before I'm filming this video, my skin stayed looking matte like all day, which never happens never happens. I mean, some foundations I put on and I look really, really greasy after a couple of hours. Some I can get like four or five hours of wear and I look a little bit shiny, but I'm not like complete oil slick. No, this was like, it looked like I just put my makeup on an hour before and it was like that for like seven hours. It honestly blew my mind a little bit. I was not expecting that at all. I mean, when I picked up these products and heard they were mattifying, like I always secretly hope they're gonna be that good, but I never really believe that that's what's gonna happen. And then it happened and I'm like, wow, this stuff, this stuff is kind of amazing. So Monday morning as I was getting ready, then I start thinking to myself, okay, if this really is my new favorite setting spray or has the potential to be, this is just a travel size. I'm gonna blow through it relatively quickly if I start using it all the time. So I started to consider like it was the last day of the sale, maybe I should pick up the full size. And the full size spray is like 30 something dollars and I'm like, well, you know, I'm better off buying it now than waiting two months and then being like, dang, I wish I had bought this when I could have gotten 15% off. And then I saw that they had this duo for sale, which has a full size of the spray and a full size of the primer, which I did also really like. And this set retailed for about $40 or $42. So it basically made each of the full size products around 20 bucks and each of them normally retailed for 30 something. So I was like, 
maybe I'm just better off getting this set and getting the discount because it ended up being not that much more than just getting the full size of this alone. So I said, you know what, screw it, I'm just gonna do it. And the only thing I'm a little bit worried about, and we'll put this to the test today, is that when I was reading reviews of the full size setting spray, a lot of people had given it negative reviews because they said that it left little white dots all over their face. Now, I didn't notice that at all with the travel sized version. So some people said that there weren't little balls inside of the big can, but I can hear them shaking around in here just like I can hear them shaking around in the little one. So here's to hoping this is not going to leave little white dots all over my face. But I figured worst case scenario, if it does and something about this packaging is better, I can always like decant this spray into the travel size. I mean, it's not ideal, but if what I want is the formula inside, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna give this guy a good shake. It does say, shake me baby. And it is really important because the silica or whatever helps to like really absorb the shine in this product will sink to the bottom it is kind of a solid and that is I think what leaves the little white dots on your face so I think what happens is if you don't shake it up really well all of the product at the bottom is what's getting sucked up into the sprayer and you're getting too much of that particulate and then it kind of goes all crazy on your face so shake I will all right fingers crossed Again, this stuff smells pretty good. It reminds me a lot, again, of the Hangover RX primers, but maybe just with a slight more hint of peach and less of coconut, but in my opinion, very similar. So if you like the scent of that, you can handle the scent of that, you can probably handle the scent of this. Also, I feel like the mist on this guy, now that I've used this and the mini, this is a little bit finer, it's a little less intense. When I feel like when you spray this on your face, it's like, whoosh, basically feels like you're taking a shower in setting spray. It definitely covers well, so that's good. But this big one was a little bit more gentle, which I appreciate. All right, so mirror of truth time. No little white dots. I am not seeing any kind of white dots anywhere. I feel like everything is looking pretty matte, pretty even. So hooray, full size. I'm glad that you did not destroy my makeup. All right, so just a couple last things to show you guys that I picked up. So uh, I did finally bite the bullet and uh, repurchase the little Pat McGrath lip glosses. I ultimately decided to get the set again. I was like going back and forth between getting the full size gloss and getting these. And what I realized is that I never finish a full size lip gloss and I was afraid if I bought that, I would never use enough of it and it would end up going to waste. It was also $3 more than this so again now at least I have a few different shades and I feel like I could more reasonably go through this amount of product before it expires so since it is my favorite of the three I'm going to put on some of this bronze temptation shade Ugh, it's just so darn pretty and I feel like it goes really well with this kind of peach themed makeup look Ugh. This gloss is so good. It's just as good as I remember it being. So these Pat McGrath lip glosses have a very gel-like texture to them. They're quite thick, but not sticky, like, at all. They feel like they really hold on to the lips and they're not gonna, like, fade off after 0.2 seconds. And it adds color, but not, like, a lot of color. So it gives you a little bit of something something, but it wouldn't necessarily compete with, like, a lipstick or lip liner, depending on what you wanted to layer it with, but... I mean, here, I didn't put it on top of anything, and I feel like it looks beautiful for just, like, an everyday kind of look. Mm. Love it so much, and it smells incredible. Like, so delicious. Like, chocolate, buttercream, frosted, cupcakey goodness. And uh, while we're on the topic of scents, the very last product that I picked up was a perfume. And this is quite possibly the thing that excited me most of everything that I got. Mostly because I didn't expect or anticipate that I would be buying it in the full size ever and I got such a good deal on it I am just like 
Yes. So this is the Commodity Gold Eau de Parfum, and I had picked up a travel size of this back in like February, actually in the same purchase that I bought these Pat McGrath lip glosses originally. And I got the travel spray because it was $26, and uh, this full size bottle is normally 105. And as much as I was obsessed with this scent, I could not bring myself to spend $105 on a bottle of it. So I was like, let me just get the travel spray. I'll use that maybe for my birthday. I'll ask for the full size as a gift or something like that. And then I happened to see on the Sephora website that uh, this perfume was like marked down clearance, like all commodity was on sale. I don't know if they're discontinuing the brand. I feel like it's pretty new to Sephora. So I don't know if the brand is being discontinued or if Sephora is just not carrying it anymore. I can't imagine why they would discount the whole brand so significantly if they were still planning on carrying it. But uh, this guy was marked down to $63. $63 from 105 plus 15% off. I was like, yes, please sign me up. I need that up right now immediately in my life. So I ran out to my local Sephora and I bought it and uh, I have zero regrets. Yes, it was a more expensive purchase, but I feel like I essentially got this for like just a little bit more than half price and that's crazy. I honestly never expected to get that good of a deal on this perfume and I love the way that it smells so freaking much. It most definitely is my favorite perfume right now. It's very vanilla, ambery, kind of sweet, but it also has that sort of sexy, musky undertone to it. And what I noticed is that this lasts so well. Like as much as I love my Nest perfumes, I feel like those are not as long wearing as this is. If I spray this on myself in the morning, I feel like the next day when I get up to take a shower, I can still smell it on myself. I can smell it on my clothes when I like go to wash them and do the laundry. It's crazy. It like really hangs on there. So even though it's expensive, I feel like the quality is very, very good and that it's like deserving of the higher price point. I just don't have $105 to be spending on perfume. So I am so, so glad that uh, this went on sale. I have no idea if you can even get this anymore. It was completely sold out online. I don't know in your local stores if you're interested in commodity, they may still have some in stock. I would definitely recommend checking it out if it is still clearance, but yeah. Their perfumes, very, very solid quality wise. Gold is absolutely incredible if you like those vanilla -y scents and uh, that was definitely my biggest win of the sale. All right guys, so that is it from me today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, playing with some uh, beauty goodness. If you enjoyed this format of video, doing the whole kind of like try on haul, definitely let me know, leave a comment, give this video a thumbs up. Y'all know how much it helps me out. And uh, if you're new, I hope you will consider subscribing, coming back hanging out with me again. I have got lots of fun videos planned coming up. If uh, you haven't already noticed, I've uploaded a little bit more this week than I normally do and I'm gonna try to keep it going. I don't want to like jinx myself, but I really want to see how far I can like push myself as far as creating content goes and delivering more videos for you guys, doing more tutorials, more looks and whatnot. So uh, here's to hoping you'll be seeing more of my face in your subscription feed in the near future. Anyway, on that note, I'm gonna let you guys go, but I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.